This is a video essay on digital diaspora of Tai Chi. Using the transnational network of TriStar Tai Chi on WeChat, I would like to build a case for understanding migration as a network building system facilitated by information and communication technologies. Monica Boyd states that studying networks, particularly those linked to family and households, permits understanding migration as a social product, not as the sole result of individual decisions made by individual actors, not as the sole result of economic and political parameters, but rather as an outcome of all these factors in interaction. Charles Tilly exerts that it is not people who migrate, but networks. Founded in 1992 by Master Li Rong, who migrated from China to Canada, TriStar Tai Chi is inspired by the civilization of Sanxingdui, which inherited the ancient culture of Shu and Xinxia. The primary aim of TriStar Tai Chi is to help people restore and achieve their optimal health and well-being while promoting the understanding and method of ancient Chinese martial and healing arts. The school in Canada is located at 4310 Slocan Street in East Vancouver and has been there since 1997. In 2019, a second location was opened in Chengdu, Sichuan, named Rongning Kangyang Xin Ya She. A third location opened in Chengdu this year in 2020, a mere 20 minute drive away from the other location. Here is a brief introduction of Rongning Kangyang Xin Ya She in Chengdu. As you can see, it is not a typical Tai Chi school as you would have imagined. It is also a place where people can gather to drink tea. And listen to music. For many years, Master Li Rong divides her time between Canada and China. In her absence, she keeps in touch with her students through WeChat, a popular Chinese social media app. In the past, when she was away from Canada, she would video call with her Canadian students once a week and offered instructions through web conference. When she was back in Canada, she continued to monitor the progress of her Chinese students through WeChat. At each location, she also trains local instructors to run the classes in her absence. Since the global outbreak of COVID-19 in March 2020, Master Li Rong has been spending her time in Vancouver, Canada. As the school was closed, she moved her classes online through Zoom. In the meantime, she also started an online class catering to a group of Chinese students who are mostly women in the age range between 40s and 50s. These women immigrated to Canada from Hong Kong, China, and Taiwan. The classes are instructed in Mandarin. Master Li Rong created a group chat in WeChat specifically for these new students. In the group chat, she would post videos of herself doing the Tai Chi set to allow them to practice by themselves and also share information that might be useful for the practice. In June, the school reopened and this group of new students started attending classes in person. The group chat continues to be active as Master Li Rong now posts videos of the students themselves practicing at the school and gives them encouragement and positive feedback. 
President Trump is making good on his threat to crack down on August 6, 2020. Social media apps. President he Donald Trump announced that he will be banning WeChat and TikTok. These apps are common, sold, especially Mr. among older generations of immigrants. Spyware. Who Today left China many decades ago, for, uh, but still from want London. to stay connected. Uh, so many During the pandemic, the story, when traveling the back to China is complicated, expensive, and involves an extra period in quarantine, many are staying put, making WeChat even more essential. It has become an indispensable link of the Chinese diaspora to China. When this is taken away, what does this entail for the Chinese diaspora in America and maybe Canada? To understand the extent of infiltration of WeChat in the lives of Chinese people, let's take a look at this brief introduction by CNN. WeChat is everywhere in Chinese daily life. Its parent company, Tencent, has used that popularity to become one of the richest companies in the world. So when the notoriously media-shy company offered a tour of its headquarters in southern China, we of course said yes, even if we didn't actually see very much. WeChat headquarters is actually located in this upscale retail park. Its buildings are surrounded by nice boutiques, fancy coffee shops. To be honest, it's really nice, and in China, that's not entirely common. Most people get to work in soulless buildings or dusty factories, but no matter where you work, you use WeChat. Nearly 900 million people use it every month. At its core, WeChat is a messaging app. I use it to make dinner plans with my wife, but what really makes it stand out is what else it can do. So to get to this restaurant, I found a taxi using WeChat. Two minutes ago, I ordered these dumplings using that QR code on WeChat. And I'm going to pay for these dumplings in a couple minutes after I'm done using WeChat. So one of the more impressive things about WeChat, of course, is the sheer scale of its reach. So here you can see real-time data of how many people are using the app worldwide. The number at the top, 665 million plus people using it worldwide, about 500 million of which are in mainland China, as you can see. But as the world shifts here a little bit, you can see the amount of blue dots, the people using the app, really starts to decrease as you go through the rest of the world. Tencent's long-term strategy then, of course, is to get more people using the app worldwide. WeChat Pay just launched in the U.S. for the first time, mainly targeting Chinese tourists there, and now operates in more than a dozen countries in total. But in all, this remains an app centered on Chinese people. And in order to operate in China, you've got to play by Communist Party rules, which means WeChat is unquestionably complicit with the government's increasing online censorship. Experts say the company regularly deletes unfavorable keywords and even pictures. Think posts on human rights or criticism of the government. WeChat is an internet juggernaut poised to keep growing as long as it does what China's government wants it to. Matt Rivers, CNN, Guangzhou, China. Eighty percent of the content on the internet come from users, from social networks. If anything, the ban by President Trump goes to show how central a role diasporas play in reshaping political and economic forces, as more and more new generations of immigrants are embedded in the telecommunication systems. In the meantime, for ordinary people who stay out of politics and go about their daily lives, such as the TriStar Tai Chi community, classes go on as usual, and everyone does their part in staying healthy and managing lives during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video essay.